I'm at the biggest water fight in Thailand. As you can see here, everybody's prepping for war. And uh, it looks like it's crazy fun. want to reflect a little bit about what's been going on the past few days and so the past few days it's been song cran everybody's splashing buckets of water on you and shooting squirt guns at you I would have to say when you're going 45 miles an hour on your motorbike and someone splashes you with a big bucket of water it almost knocks you over but I wanted to talk a little bit about um, song cran song cran Everybody's having so much fun. Everybody's laughing. Everybody's cooling off because it's, it was literally 99 degrees today. It's extremely hot. Even right now, it's hot. I'm, I'm, I'm already perspiring right now. It's about 8 o'clock in the evening. And uh, I'd have to say, there's been too much in my mind that I can't really enjoy Song Kran. About a week ago, a young man and his wife, they came from Vietnam. Most of you already know. This guy, he came to us uh, not knowing any of us, but he just knew that there would be some Hmong people in Chiang Mai that would try to help him. And so he has this big, giant tumor on his neck, and we don't know what it is. I mean, we're praying for this guy. Uh, we take him to the hospital. We take him to like four different hospitals. Nobody wants to take him in. We finally beg one of the uh, prior hospitals. And we're like, please, will you just take him in? You know, he has a fever. He's not feeling well. We need someone to watch over him just to make sure he's gonna make it through the night. And so they finally take him in. And you guys are awesome. I asked for help. Uh, currently we're probably around $11,000 and his first medical bills are, are coming in. I have some really bad news. It kinda crushed me today. Even though today it was Songkran and we're supposed to be having fun, the doctors got the biopsy back and they said the tumor is cancerous. They said it's pretty much up to us on what we want to do. We can try chemo. I actually didn't personally get to talk to the doctors. I don't know what stage he's in. I'll probably go see Thu pretty soon here so I can talk to some of the doctors. I told him to get the translations uh, done from Viet Vietnamese into English. And when we actually got the Vietnamese medical records, they actually never did a biopsy. They didn't know if it was cancer or not. They, his medical records looked pretty incomplete. It's decision making time. And in my head, my head is just stern. I just don't know what to do, what to think. My heart is, is just crying out for this young man. When I see him sleeping, he has to sleep sitting. Because when he lays on his back, the weight of the tumor is just so big, so much that it's just crushing his windpipe. Even right now, they said he's got, he's got his windpipe his air passage is so small and he can barely breathe. And they said that if the tumor keeps getting bigger, he won't be able to breathe and they'll just have to stick tubes down his down his windpipe to help him breathe. Things in this world are tough. I came back from a village called Atakau. There I saw another young man, he's 22. He's been uh, bedridden since he was about two or three years old. I'm not sure what he has. It's hard, it's very hard, because when most people try to explain to you uh, the symptoms or, or the diagnosis, they, they really don't know. Most of the time they'll go see a doctor and come back and they really don't know what's going on. Some people told me this boy's got, this boy got polio, but from the looks of it, he's, so every single piece of muscle in his body is constricted. And uh, it's to the point where it's disfigured his bones in his joints and he just lays on the ground all day and he can't speak because even the muscles in his throat and his mouth are constricted but he can understand when we talk to him you can see his eyes light up you can see when we say can you speak to us he'll try and speak it's just you know I think about myself and I just think about life and many of you know me for the past couple years I've been having plantar fasciitis in my in my right foot. Actually, I've been having plantar fasciitis for since I was 25, for over 10 years, and it pretty much 
started, I was on this running binge and I'd run like 10 miles a day. But now it's moved over to chronic plantar fasciitis. It just doesn't go away anymore. And it bugs me every day, but I can still walk. I can still run. I can even play sports. It's just, I have to pay for it afterwards. Just pay for it with some pain. But after I see the pain that all these other people are going through, I look at myself and I'm like, ah, Paul, what do you, you know, you put things into perspective and you almost feel selfish. I think it, I think to myself and I'm like, man, there's people out there who are, who just struggle to walk or they can't even walk anymore. Or like the young man who came to us with a giant tumor. What's his outlook? He's got kids. He's desperate. If he wasn't desperate, he wouldn't travel all the way from Vietnam to Chiang Mai. So, please do pray. Pray for all the pain that's in the world right now. I know that these few people I've met, I mean, they're not the only ones in pain. I know there's many people in the States who are in pain. The good thing is, there's people that care. People like you. And I thank you so much for your support. Signing off.